Hey everyone, I'm Melissa from Knitting the Stash, and this is episode 105 in the series. I'm so excited. This is like the big reveal episode. This is the episode where I finally get to tell you guys all the little things I've been up to in the last couple of months and invite you to come join me in all of these new ventures. So yeah, it's also an episode that's totally about farm yarn, which is one of my true passions. Uh, so I have the uh, Shorn 3 launch, which is coming up next Friday, uh, July 16th. I have um, a new shop. I have an online yarn shop that specializes in farm yarn called the Flock Farm Yarn Shop. And I'm so excited to tell you guys about it. So we're gonna do a little shop update, a little shop preview for you before uh, next Friday. And I have a feature for you from Fairly Fiber Fun, uh, Kim Boyce, who's been working on some beautiful hand spun, and she works with conservation breeds and uh, farmers and small producers in the mountains of Georgia. So it is all farm yarn all the time today, and I, th I hope you enjoy the, the uh, content of this episode. For those of you who are new, <laughs> this is not a typical episode. Typically I'm talking about sweaters and construction and design and modification, and I will get back to that on, on the next episodes as we go. If you're coming back, it's always just so nice to see you and to get messages from you. So. Thanks for hanging out with me here in this space. So if you're looking for me, I am knitting the stash pretty much everywhere. On Ravelry and Instagram and on uh, YouTube, obviously. And I have an old blog, which is knittingthestash.wordpress.com, and that's where I used to direct you for everything. But one of the things that's, that's revealed today is that I've been building a new website. So now you can just go to knittingthestash.com for everything. Uh, I've got links to the blog up there and the podcast. All my patterns and designs are up there. Uh, the Flock Farm Yarn Shop is up there. And eventually, within the next month, I'm gonna have a bunch of classes up there. Right now, all the YouTube tutorials are up there, but I've been secretly filming lots and lots of videos for classes that are gonna be coming out in August and September and October. So yeah, you're gonna see a lot of classes from me on sweaters, modification, uh, and all the things that we tend to do on this podcast. So. That's yet another really exciting thing that's out there. So you can go to knittingthestash.com for everything. And if you're interested in getting on the list, on the newsletter list, on the email list for all of the updates for the shop and for some of the farm yarns I'll be featuring and for Shorn 3, uh, send me an email at knittingthestash at gmail.com or head on over to knittingthestash.com and just fill out that little contact form and I'll get your email that way and I can put you on the list. Then you'll be updated when there are things like early bird, pre-sales, limited editions, anything special that's coming to the shop, I'll send out a special message to those of you on the uh, insider newsletter list. Okay, so make sure you do that. The next update is going out July 14th, just before the shop opens, and believe me, it's definitely something that you want to be in on. So send me your email if you want to get signed up for that list. So should we do, I think we should do a little Shorn 3, because you guys have been waiting for Shorn 3 for a very long time, and then I'll give you a shop update. I'm so excited to be able to say that. It's like a shop preview. Finally, I, I've been kind of wanting to do this farm yarn shop for a very long time, and this is, to me, like, just the culmination of a lot of work, so I'm very excited about it. And for those of you who watched a couple episodes ago, you saw me sh skirting fleece and sending things off to the mill, and that is all part of this process. It's really fun to know where you're yarn comes from to have these are sheep that have been out in our pasture uh, at least for the summers and so it's just a nice kind of trail of, of knowing where your where your materials are coming from and it makes me really happy to do that so so shorn three I showed it to you guys a while back um, because I was looking for designers this is the yarn it is a beautiful blend of Corydale and Corydale Teeswater Cross and you can see, I think, the luster in this because of the teeswater that's mixed in there. Teeswater is more of a long wool than Corydale. Corydale is like a medium wool. Uh, and so this has a lot of softness and strength, which is why it's perfect for some of the patterns that um, my brilliant designers came up with. So for this yarn, this will be in the shop on Friday, July 16th. And it is put up in... Uh, two and a half ounce skeins, so there's about uh, 250 yards for each skein. So, you know, if you put two together, it's a little more than what you'd have for a typical sock, uh, sock yarn, like fingering weight yarn, like 
it's a little over 400 yards, it can be 500 yards if you add two of them together. So plenty for a pair of socks or a pair of mittens or for a hat, as you'll see. So the brilliant designers that uh, responded to the call for this yarn put together some beautiful patterns. And these will be available as kits in the shop. And I'm pretty excited. I can't put the socks on and show you all of them all at once, but we'll, we'll do as many as we can. So this little hat with the tassels that's completely and utterly adorable was designed by Lori Lamont. And if you check out Lori's Instagram feed, it's just Lori underscore Lamont, you're gonna see some gorgeous sweaters and shawls and all kinds of things. She's, she's phenomenal with cables. So I think you'll love this hat. It is a fold, you can do a folded brim or a non-folded brim. Uh, and there are three different sizes and the tassels are optional. I made mine uh, detachable so that if I wanna wear it with tassels, like when I'm ice skating, <laughs> then I can keep them on. And if I wanna pop them off and just wear a more plain hat, then I can do that as well. So this one is Lori Lamont and it is called My Tassel Hat. And this is one of the beautiful patterns that was designed just for Shorn 3. See all those luscious cables. I just love the cables. They're so scrunchy. It's, this yarn is a three ply yarn and three ply yarns are just really great with cables. They just, um, they're very round. So with, with the cables, they just pop. And this I think shows even better in the mitts that are designed by Amy Engelbrecht Wiggins. And these are gorgeous. You can do them either as fingerless mitts or as Full mittens both options are in the pattern and I think you can see the, the beautiful beautiful cable definition that you get with this yarn it's just absolutely gorgeous so these are the as seen on Wikipedia mitts and they were inspired by the as seen on Wikipedia socks which Amy has also designed for this yarn and I think you can see again the cable definition is just gorgeous on these uh, and the thing about these socks is that when they're knit up in this particular yarn, they're going to be super sturdy because it's a three ply yarn. It has the little bit of tease water, which is the longer wool in it. So they're going to be durable as socks. And I was really excited to see um, a couple of sock patterns come across the, the email list when I put out the call for designs. Uh, and this one, I think, just really captures the, the beauty of the cable. So as seen on Wikipedia socks, as seen on Wikipedia mitts <laughs> and Lori Lamont's My Tassel Hat will all be up uh, in the shop, in the shop update for Shorn. And you can buy single skeins of the yarn if you're interested in just getting your hands on this farm yarn, farm to skein yarn. Uh, as I said, it was grown uh, by Kathy of Seven Sisters Farm on her beautiful Coriadale sheep down in Sydney. They're the same sheep that come pasture with us in the summer. We have six of the moms out there right now who are enjoying a little bit of a weaning break from the babies. It's like their special spa vacation out there. Uh, I skirted all the fleece myself and sent them to the mill and designed the yarn so that it would be this three ply fingering weight yarn this time around. Uh, yeah, so I'm really excited to get this out in the world to you guys. I hope you love it. Um, and you can, like I said, you can get skeins. A lot of people like to knit sweaters out of the Shorn yarn. We've done Shorn 1 and Shorn 2, and that's one of the biggest, um, besides the kits, the biggest request I get is for sweater quantities of this yarn. So I think this would make a beautiful sweater. Uh, and if you wanted to get a hold of the kits, the kits for the hat or the mittens or the socks, uh, come with two skeins of yarn and uh, code for a PDF download from the knittingthestash.com website. So yeah, you can get kits, you can get skeins, and it's all farm yarn. It's all from sheep that uh, we petted in the pasture, <laughs> pretty much, which makes me happy. Plus I love this hat, it's super warm. And I was so happy to have these designers um, working on the, the yarn. Amy is a beautiful designer in her own right. She has, um, she's uh, Amy Knit Socks up on Ravelry, and you can check out her other work. She has some gorgeous shawls up there. And like I said, Lori, this was one of um, Lori's first patterns, so I'm super excited to help sponsor a new designer and help her get her ideas and her patterns out into the world. And I do want to note that 
all of the kits, 100% of the proceeds for the pattern part of the kit go to the designer. I want this to be the kind of enterprise where everybody feels like they've been compensated for the work that they're doing and recognized for all of the hard work that they put into this yarn lunch. So thank you so much, Lori Lamont and Amy Engelbrecht Wiggins for designing some beautiful patterns for Shorn. I'm excited. I hope you guys are too. And like I said, July 16th is when that will go up into the Flock Farm Yarn Shop. Get on that email list though, so that you might get a little email on July 14th and you might want to be on that list. <laughs> anyway, that's Shorn. The other thing that's going on up in that yarn shop though are some small batch yarns that I think you're going to love. And my plan with the Flock Farm Yarn Shop is to scour the country basically and I, I've met a lot of wonderful shepherds. I have some people in mind who I'd love to contact to be in the shop. I know a lot of you know uh, small producers and I'd love to hear from you. We have a thread up in Ravelry, in the Ravelry group about small farm yarn producers. So if you have suggestions of people I could contact or who might, people who might be interested in getting their farm uh, yarn featured in the shop, please let me know because I'm, I'm open to suggestions. So like I said, the, um, the Flock Farm Yarn Shop is going to have a kind of rotating curated collection of yarns from these small producers. So for the first round of yarns, I went to some of the local producers that I know and have worked with around here. So uh, Christy of Fox Run Fibers down in Monticello, Illinois, uh, has beautiful Cormo sheep and I love going down there to visit them. They're just the sweetest, most friendliest sheep ever and they will just come right up to you and nuzzle you and they're just adorable. So she has some beautiful uh, Cormo yarn that she dyed botanically. So this is with natural dyes and I'm just going to show you a few different colors here. This is the natural Cormo and this is put up in two ounce skeins with 150 yards each and it is a really, oh god, so soft. It's a beautiful little two-ply yarn. That's the natural. Um, and like I said, she's done so much botanical dyeing, all these different colors. We have different pinks, different yellows, blues, uh, just gorgeous. This one's avocado pit dyed. This one is, um, this one is onion skins. I think those colors are coming out, especially helps if you can see them against the natural. So I have lots of Cormo that's naturally dyed that's going to be up in the shop. And uh, I have some yarn from Kathy of Seven Sisters Farm, and she's the one who raises the Corydale, but she used to raise Lester Longwools, and we have some of the beautiful uh, Lester Longwool yarn that she has hand dyed with acid dyes. So I've got a few different schemes here. This is her heirloom yarn, and this is in a, I think she calls this one peacock blue. This is a teal, which I think you can see there, and then this one is a lilac. And again, these are, this is Heirloom from Kathy of Seven Sisters Farm. And she's over in Sydney, Illinois. Beautiful long wool means that it's gonna be incredibly durable, uh, wonderful for weaving, but I think also really beautiful for knitting. And actually Amy Engelbrecht Wiggins, um, who was a designer for one, uh, two of my patterns for Shorn, uh, has designed a beautiful shawl for this yarn. I've designed a hat for this yarn. So it's an incredibly, I think it's a very durable yarn. It's also very soft and the colors, because of the long wool, I hope you guys can see these. I mean, these colors are saturated. It's just vibrant blues and purples and greens and there's some natural in there, uh, some kind of burnt sienna. There's just really a wonderful selection over that will be up on Friday. So I can't wait for you to try those. And Kathy and Christy got together to form the Prairie Shepherds Cooperative Partnership. Um, and they together produced a yarn that is a blend of Cormo, Coriadel, and um, Lester Longwool. So here are just three possible colors in that. These, this is the Prairie um, Shepherds yarn. And it is, you can see, just this is acid dyed. It is beautifully subtle colors. Uh, perfect for things like shawls and sweaters and um, accessories. I just, I'm in love with this yarn. <laughs> I think I might need to uh, knit my own sweater out of it. It's just so gorgeous. So this color is Fleabane, this one is Prairie Duck Red, and this one is Dew. And they named all of their colorways after plants uh, and veg vegetation that exists here in the Midwest where they're um, farming. So. It's acid dyed, but they're named after kind of plants 
and other natural phenomena around here in the Midwest. I love these three. So gorgeous. But I have so many other colors that are going to be up in the shop on Friday. And I have a couple samples that um, Christy knit up in the yarn to show you. So this is, um, actually, this is from Lane Magazine. It was a test knit, actually, for Lane Magazine. And it is the Selenite cardigan. So you might recognize it from issue number six of Lane Len magazine. I, think I, I'm, I always say Lane, but I think it's Len. And here is the some of the close-ups for the pattern. So this is Selenite, and it's knit up in that Prairie Shepherd's yarn. I think in a colorway, I want to say it's in the Prairie Duck red. That looks almost right, or one of the other reds that's very close to this. Uh, and you can see the it's beautiful stitch definition, I think. This is a pattern that has um, some gorgeous raglan shaping with some lace open work at the shoulders and along the uh, side seams here. And you can see that the yarn has a slight variegation to it, which gives it a little bit of depth. And you can see that the drape is really great, but it also has a lot of elasticity and memory to it. So I think it's a, a really beautiful um, yarn construction to blend together the medium and the long wools and the cormo. It kind of just plays on all of their real strengths. Now Christy also knit up, this is the Wildflower uh, Hill Shawl by Helen Stewart. And she did this in a number of different colors from the Prairie Shepherds line. And I think you can see, I love this, look at this blue. It's just a gorgeous blue. I, that's the one, I really want a sweater in that blue, but I love the yellows that they were able to get achieved with their dyeing. And these, this purple is just, it's just such rich, beautiful colors. Um, yeah, so you can see it's good for lace, it's good for cables, it's good for texture. Uh, and so much beautiful color. I, this shawl is really gorgeous, and it's nice and big and plump. I think this probably would take a couple of skeins of the Prairie Shepherd's yarn. Um, God, it really is just, the play with the colors is so pretty, the purple with this uh, kind of muted color that has a little bit of the purples in it. Yes, love it. So those are a couple of samples from the uh, Prairie Shepherd's yarn that's going to be going up in the shop on Friday. So those are, we've got four yarns in the shop already, which makes me very happy. <laughs> and I hope you'll enjoy browsing around and imagining all the possibilities with these yarns. And I think it's really exciting that all of these yarns are farm yarns that come from flocks where the sheep have names and they're really well tended and cared for. And there are moms and lambs and everybody's kind of living harmoniously on these um, really cool small farms in the middle of Illinois. So like I said, these are the first yarns. We've got Shorn 3, we have the Prairie Shepherd um, yarn, we have Heirloom, and we have the Fox Run Fiber Cormo all going up in the shop. And my goal for the next season or so is to keep finding more and more farm yarns and stocking the shop with them so that you have a nice curated kind of taste of all of these the work that people are doing um, both here and uh, around the country to keep these breeds alive and keep sheep and um, take good care of them. It's something I've been focusing on in this podcast and on the blog for many years now and I'm just really passionate about it and I, I think a lot of you guys are too and it's it's nice to finally have an outlet for that kind of um, work and creativity. So yeah, so that's the shop preview. Super exciting. So yeah, Flock Farm Yarn Shop, Friday, July 16th, and uh, I hope you'll go over and browse and hang out and send me messages and let me know what you think of the website, if things are working, if they're not working. I'm totally, I'm a, prof I'm a professor in my other day job, so I'm open to criticism. Let me know. <laughs> if stuff's not working, I want to know about it, and if it is working, that's great too. Uh, so I look forward to seeing you there for the, for the launch. So next up, I have my finished object for the episode. This is the Lenny hat by Isabel Kramer. I know I'm on a little bit of an Isabel Kramer kick and there's one more sweater to come on the next episode. So this is her free hat pattern and I'll talk to you all about it. But I also wanna to talk to you about the yarn that I used to knit it because it's a really special yarn from a special sheep called the Gulf Coast Native. It was hand spun by Kim Boyce of Fairly Fiber Fun. And Kim is a really sweet, wonderful woman who uh, sent me a message asking if I'd be interested in checking out her hand spun and uh, working with it. And I said, of course, sure. I, I mean, I love working with hand spun. 
the the idea that someone would be willing to send you hand spun is like a, an absolute treasure and if you ever meet anyone who offers you their hand spun you just say yes hand spun yarn is like some of the best most amazing stuff on the planet i think because we get so used to this machine spun yarn this mill spun yarn which is wonderful for its own reasons but i think there's something about hand spun yarn where someone has put their like heart and soul into like every yard of that yarn and it just shows it shows in all the ways that that yarn um is it just feels alive in different ways than mill spun yarn does i i think personally so i just like to say up front thank you so much kim for sending this beautiful yarn and giving me a chance to play with it, especially to play with a Gulf Coast native yarn. Um, that's a breed that I've been really interested in for a bunch of years, but I haven't had a chance to work with the yarn yet. So this was triply fantastic. Uh, so Kim Boyce, and I just got to show you her little, her, her little inspiration since it's fairly fiber fun, right? You think about little fairies and she just, she seems like she has a good muse going on for her shop. Uh, this particular yarn that I used was a light fingering two ply, 100 grams for 440 yards. So for those of you who are hand spinners, you know that is a fine singles <laughs> that was plied together with another single. So this is the yarn. It's all caked up. And you can see just how fine this yarn is, I think. Really super fine yarn. Beautiful. Beautifully spun, beautifully plied. And it has this, it's in the natural white and I've really come over the years to appreciate natural colors in fleece and fiber and it's something that I think Sarah of Fiber Trek initially introduced me to this idea that natural fibers can be just as beautiful as dyed fibers uh, there's something about them that's just it's lovely to know that it's just this is the color of the sheep and you can mix different colors from different sheeps and do all kinds of fun things so and I said sheeps, I know, I just pluralized something that's already plural, I know, but it's just fun to say. So I knit up a quick swatch in her yarn, just uh, just holding it singly, just to see what it would look like. And you can see it produces a nice, light, airy, very drapey kind of fabric. And to do this hat, which is that Isabel Kramer hat, uh, I decided to hold her yarn double. So I was working from the outside of my cake and the inside all at once. Uh, if any of you are unfamiliar with that technique, if you want to hold yarn double, one of the ways to do it if you have a yarn cake is to take from the outside and take from the inside. And you put the two strands together, line them up, and hold them just like you would a single yarn. And you can see that this produces a thicker thicker yarn than the singles. And so for me, holding it double produced almost a, around a DK weight yarn or so. And it was perfect for this hat and what the pattern called for. So this is what the yarn looks like held double and knit up into this gorgeous hat. I love the texture of this yarn. I think it just has, like I was saying, it has a life of its own. It just has a little vibrancy that you don't always see. And Isabel Kramer's pattern has this adorable uh, dropped, kind of drop switch stitch that's picked up so that you get this effect. It looks like a wrapped stitch. There are a couple different ways to do this technique. I like the way she does hers in this hat. And I love the fact that it's just this simple band around the middle of the hat. Now she knit hers up, Isabel Kramer knit her samples up in... Um, uh, fingering weight yarn held with mohair, I think. So hers has a little bit of a halo and a fluff to it. Uh, this one, you can see, I'm going to keep putting it on, <laughs> taking it off. This one you can see um, doesn't have that kind of fluff or halo to it, but you can really see the texture of the stitches and the texture of the yarn. It has a folded brim, and <sighs> Isabel Kramer is a genius. I'm just going to say that. I think I've said that on this podcast before. I'm just going to say it again. She did this great... I thing of putting ribbing on the inside of the hat so that it still has this great stretch but on the outside of the hat all you see is the kind of plain brim. I think that's brilliant. So it's it holds on your head because it has that ribbing but on the outside it gives a kind of very finished appearance to the hat. I know the hat is kind of blowing out my <laughs> it's blowing out my camera a little bit here but that's okay. So yes so Lenny knit up in this gorgeous Gulf Coast native from Kim Boyce. I'm just really, really happy with it. I was impressed with how um, bouncy the fiber is, the, the way that the yarn kind of um, puffed up when I washed it. All of the stitches kind of filled in, they bloomed really beautifully, 
and but still maintained this kind of textured look to it which I think if you're going to knit a hat in a single color you know with a focus on this kind of textural pattern at the center you know if the yarn itself can have a little bit of life to it I think that's really key so I modified this hat just a little bit there's no tassel or a pom-pom on the top of it and I think I did fewer of the uh, decreases around the crown because I wanted less of a slouchy hat uh, and more of a, you know, you can tuck it a little bit so it's a little slouchy, but it's not super slouchy. It really just fits my head very nicely. I knit the smallest, or the medium size, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly. And like I said, holding that yarn double really allowed me to knit that size, and it was kind of just absolutely perfect, because I think my gauge might have been a little bit off, but uh, I like my hats to be not like squeezing my head tight, but just tight enough that it'll stay on. So it's just, it came out just absolutely perfect. And as I washed it and put it on the drying rack, I could see it every time I check it every couple of hours, it was just getting fuller and fuller. And you know with a winter hat that that is gonna mean a really warm hat. So yes, Lenny Isabel Kramer knit up in Fairly Fiber Fun. Now uh, Kim sent along some beautiful things for giveaways. And I, I, I just, I kind of can't even believe this because giving away hand spun yarn is like, it's, a, it's amazing. If you've never had a chance to knit with hand spun yarn, you're gonna wanna get in on this giveaway. So she sent over some fiber. This is a beautiful bat that she carded up. It's in earth tones. And I just love the grays and the browns together like that. That's just gorgeous. I believe it's a little two ounce bat. So for those of you who are spinners, you could take home this little bat and play with it. And she also sent along uh, 330 yards of her beautiful hand spun. Now this is a light sport two ply, 100 grams for 330 yards. You'll remember that the other uh, yarn that I knit with was um, 400, yeah, 100 grams for 440 yards. So this is a little bit of a heavier weight yarn, um, just as gorgeous. I think you can see the texture and hand spun. And like I said, if you've never knit with hand spun, it is an entire experience unto itself. And I, whoever wins this is gonna love the process, I think. Uh, so we gotta talk about the giveaway. This is for two different prizes. And what I'd like you guys to do is head on over to um, Fairly Fiber Fun to her website, which I'll put up on the screen and put in the show notes. And then uh, leave a comment here or over on uh, the Ravelry thread or on the show notes, which will be up on the blog, uh, letting us know what you liked in her shop and you'll be entered to win one of these two prizes. I'm pretty excited to be able to give away hand spun. That's kind of unheard of. It's a quite, it's an investment of time and energy on Kim's part and whoever wins it is gonna have some fun with that. Now I did promise that there would be a little bit about Gulf Coast native sheep. So at the very end here, I wanted to give you some insight from the Fleece and Fiber Sourcebook about the Gulf Coast native sheep. And by the way, the Fleece and Fiber Sourcebook is by Deborah Robson and Carol Acarius, and I've talked about it before. A lot of uh, podcasters and knitters and spinners have talked about this book because it is a real amazing reference manual. If you're looking at sheep breeds and breed-specific yarn and you're trying to figure out what are you um, looking at, what are you looking for, what kinds of things would be best uses for this yarn uh, or fiber. So Gulf Coast native. This is what the the page looks like. So you can see the sheep over in the corner there and then some of the fiber and samples that were spun up and knit up in this breed. And I love the first line here. <laughs> this breed has, bit, has a bit of an identity crisis. <laughs> so it depends on who you talk to. You'll hear it referred to as a bunch of different names including the piney wood sheep, Florida native, Louisiana native, or the scrub sheep. They were brought to North America by early Spanish and French explorers and evolved in response to natural, natural selection and environmental pressures in wet, hot, and buggy regions, like Florida, <laughs> that weren't well suited for the species. The animals that survived over time required little attention from people. So a lot of the Gulf Coast natives, it says, are vulnerable, in part because uh, their numbers kind of went down when some of the, the so-called improved breeds came along who were hardier and able to survive um, better in certain conditions. So the Gulf Coast native is a critical con conservation breed, which means it needs our help to keep it alive. So uh, people like Kim Boyce who are doing the work to buy fleece from small farms in the mountains of, of Georgia are doing a wonderful service to this breed and trying to raise its profile in the knitting and spinning community, I think. so. 
Gulf Coast natives are excellent foragers. They'll consume many noxious plants, such as kudzu and honeysuckle, and their lambs are small but hardy. Native lambs survive more often than do their offspring of other breeds in the south, so they're really well suited. They've evolved and, and become really well suited to living down there. Uh, they have resistance to a lot of internal parasites and diseases such as foot rot that still plague sheep in the region. So really cool kind of breed that's evolved around that, you know, Gulf Coast, the kind of hot, buggy, muggy <laughs> weather, and they've developed really cool resistances that help keep them alive and keep them thriving. Their wool quality is variable. Care of the wool uh, as a crop is coming along as a priority, and the breed uh, can be a source of nice wool that sometimes falls within the next to sink skin comfort levels, and that's absolutely what's going on with um, Kim's yarn. I find it to be really soft and uh, comfortable to wear next to the skin. It's not scratchy at all. So wherever she's sourcing this from, which we know, we know she's sourcing it from Hope Springs Farm uh, in Georgia. They're doing a great job. You're doing a great job with your fleece down there. So yeah, I am pretty excited to have one, some of you guys get a chance to try out this yarn. And if you win the giveaway or if you get something from her shop, help support uh, her business and all the work that she's doing in terms of conservation and hand spinning and dyeing and wonderful stuff with farm yarns. So I hope you've enjoyed this farm filled episode and uh, I can't wait to hear from you guys and see you on Friday for the shop update. So please stay in touch. Please keep the messages coming. I promise that these classes I've been filming will be coming out in the next month or so. So yeah, there's a lot on the horizon and I'm really excited about it. I hope you guys are too. And I hope you're all well and I hope you're enjoying your summertime and your weekend and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.